Talk Sport on air, online, and on TV at Virgin Media Channel 927. Now, the government's announced controversial plans to introduce a major badger cull in England to tackle TB in cattle. The RSPCA said it was a black day for badgers, claiming the scientific case to support the mass slaughter of the animals had not been made. Caroline Spellman, the Environment Secretary, acknowledged there was great strength of feeling about the issue, but told the Commons, I believe this is the right way forward. However, anti-culling campaigner Jack Reedy from the Badger Trust warns the plans are flawed scaring badgers out of their normal habits. You destabilize their social arrangements and so on, and you're running a great risk of spreading the disease if they have it. Now, the RSPCA, as I said, described it as a black day for badgers, ahead of an expected announcement of a major cull to control bovine TB. Farmers have called for action for years, but mass slaughter of the animals has polarized opinion with wildlife campaigners bitterly opposed, one of whom, uh, Brian May uh, of Queen, we're going to be talking to shortly. Caroline Spellman, the Environment Secretary, will address MPs in the Commons in response to a consultation on badger control. The Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, DEFRA, remained tight-lipped about the announcement, but a cull is one of the methods considered in order to keep badger numbers down. Ahead of the announcement, the RSPCA said it believed that at least 70% of the badger population in large areas of the country will be killed despite the charity saying scientific studies showed that a cull would be of little help in reducing the disease in the long term and could actually make things worse in some areas. David Bowles, Director of Communications for the RSPCA, said, Today is a black day for badgers, a day we have been dreading. At a time when the Welsh Government have stepped back from a cull, the Government in England is slowly shredding its own animal welfare credentials. The RSPCA said vaccination of badgers, increased levels of testing, improved biosecurity and stricter control on the movement of cattle were more effective ways of eradicating bovine TB in cattle. For good, Colin Booty, senior scientist for the RSPCA, said, We're sympathetic to farmers struggling to cope with the effects of this crippling disease and think that the problem of bovine, bovine TB in cattle needs a sustainable and effective solution, but this is not such a solution. So the animal rights campaigners are up in arms and have... Uh, uh, entered the fray uh, big time and there's no better campaigner from my own experience uh, in Britain today than the legendary guitarist from Queen and human and animal rights campaigner Brian May and I'm very glad to say that Brian joins us now Brian welcome to the show Hello George thanks very much Not at all uh, it's a, an honour actually to have you on the show now uh, tell me um, oh, you're very it's kind. a black day for badgers, say the RSPCA. The uh, government say it's a fine judgment, it's a difficult 50-50 kind of uh, choice, but they've gone for the cull and 70% of England's badgers are going to be wiped out. This is mass slaughter, isn't it? And it's not even going to work. It's an appallingly bad decision. Not only are they doing something awful morally, uh, it's absolutely not supported by all the scientific evidence and it's not going to work. It's, it stands a great risk of making the problem worse in cows. And I cannot believe that, that the, the government has been pressured into this um, because it, it looks like that to me. Unfortunately, we don't have any people in, in our government at the moment who support the welfare of, of wild animals. They're all farmers. And well, unfortunately, farm farmers and fox hunters. Well, exactly, yes. So, so it's a very uneven fight at the moment. I, my theory is that this will be the last really animal abusive government that we'll ever have. I think this government, this, this, this country is going to rise up against this outdated way of thinking. Now, you say that you think the government have been pressured into it. Who by? Basically, the extremist end of the farming community. And unfortunately, the extremists are the people who talk loudest. And unfortunately, they have the most power because they control the NFU. I mean, I'm in contact with, through the Save Me campaign that I run, with dozens of farmers throughout the country who are not in favour of the cull and who regard it as a very, very lame option. Now, uh, these uh, farmers are uh, presumably uh, aware of the very doubtful scientific evidence that this will actually do the job. Evidence that what, sorry? Well, the, 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 the scientific uh, evidence that we've got seems to suggest that there's a very good case for believing that despite all this slaughter, it's actually not going to achieve the result that they're aiming for. 
there is absolutely no chance that it can eradicate bovine TB. I wish I could draw you some diagrams because I'm so used to thinking about this and talking about it. But basically, you cannot achieve um, the elimination of a reservoir of a disease by doing bits and pieces of culling. You're, you're very much inclined to make the problem worse. And it's been amply demonstrated. They killed over a 10-year study, you probably know this, in the RBT um, research project, they killed 11,000 badgers over a period of 10 years. And the result, the conclusion they came to was that culling badgers cannot meaningfully, meaningfully contribute to the control of bovine TB in Britain. Cannot meaningfully, con meaningfully control, no mention of eliminate. You know, the, the only way to eliminate this disease is by vaccination. And unfortunately, we are looking at people who ignore the scientific evidence as well as the moral grounds. Who's going to do this killing? I mean, are they going to hire you know, retired soldiers to go around the country looking for badgers to shoot? Well, the experiment was done by humanely trapping the animals and killing them humanely. What Caroline Spellman is putting in place is a scheme whereby farmers will be able to basically go out and shoot them themselves. It's the most appallingly uncontrollable solution you could possibly come to. It's also expensive for the farmers. And of course, many of the badgers are going to escape. They may possibly be diseased. They may possibly carry the infection to the neighboring farm. So you're going to look, you're going to have farmer pitched against farmer, really. It's an appalling, an appalling situation that we're headed into, unless we head them off at the pass. I mean, I'm just hoping that this will be the third time that the that DEFRA will have to do an about turn. We've seen the forests, we've seen the circus animals. This is a much, much worse, a much more appalling decision than any of those. Well, what can listeners do to help you, Brian, in this campaign? Well, in this instance, the League Against Cruel Sports has uh, put up a petition. Um, and I would like everybody to sign that petition. If you Google um, Badger, consult, uh, Badger Petition, and LACS, League Against Cruel, Cruel Sports, you'll find the petition. They have about 20,000 signatures already, and it's only been a day or so. If they get 100,000 uh, signatures, the government will have to open up a debate in, in the Commons about it, and we'll, have to, and we'll be able to, to reopen the whole issue. Now, your own website is uh, uh, www.save-me.org.uk. Tell us a bit That's about right. that. Yes, well... So we came into existence for exactly this kind of thing, really, to try and be a voice for wild animals, because unfortunately, as I say, there isn't a voice for them in government at the present time. We hope to change that. And we started off by campaigning against um, Cameron and his, his, his colleagues' uh, intent to bring back the, the hunting of foxes with, with dogs, uh, which is still very much on the agenda, and we will be fighting that tooth and claw till the end, if you like. Um, but really, it's about all wild animals, because wild animals of Britain, unfortunately, are not treated with respect, and this has to change. Well, I mean, we're talking about a political class that doesn't treat people with respect, so why would they treat dumb animals with respect? Yeah, well, there's a lot of dumb, dumb animals in politics, unfortunately. <laughs> indeed there is. Brian May, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Brian May, uh, erstwhile Queen guitarist, nowadays um, a big, powerful voice for wild animals. And uh, you heard what he said you ought to do. I hope you'll do it. He